Hey, Doug. Hey, Mark. Give me just a sec trying to organize my screen here. I don't know how I got all messed up. It was only quiet because nobody spoke, I understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <clears throat> as I was uh, clicking on the Zoom link, I had this great fear that it was going to ask me for a password. <laughs> I forgot to check yesterday to make sure it was safe. All right, where are we? Hello, David. Hello, how are you? It's been a while. Okay. Yep, uh, Mark is here. I heard him. <clears throat> Clemens. And let's see. Um, Mike, you there? Yep, how are you? All right, tell me. Hey. Hello, Vladimir. I think that's Vladimir, right? Scott told me that he had a conflict today. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's a Canada community meeting, so there's a lot of people. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I was going to join too. Well, I had another meeting that couldn't make it, but yeah. All right. Vladimir, are you there? What about Manuel? I guess he has a microphone. We'll wait. So do we need an SDK call today, Mark or Clemens, or anybody else, I guess? No, no, no. Okay, I'd rather I eat lunch. I don't think life. so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'd much rather eat lunch. Um, I see activity else. going on in the various SDKs, so. Hi, Doug, how are yeah. you? Yeah, yep, hey, hey, Klaus, yeah. But I'm not hearing anybody scream for a topic. I guess we could check and see if um, uh, Slinky has anything. He's probably on the K-Native community meeting as well. <laughs> Good point. Was anybody on that at all? I'm curious to know if it was interesting. I wasn't on it. Yeah. All right. Hey, Eric. Good morning. Hey, Ray. Hello. Good morning or afternoon. Hey. Yeah. Hello usually covers it. Hey, Francesco. Hello. Ugh. Hey, Lance. Hello. Okay, give one more minute. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Manuel, are you there now? Manuel Stein, you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Oh, there Sorry. you go. Excellent. And Vladimir, I think that T S U R D I L O V I C. I think that is Vladimir, right? No, that's Tihomir. Uh, T I J M I R. I'm, I'm sorry, you're very hard to hear. Oh, it's it's the guy on that's on the agenda for serverless workflow. T I. Oh, Timur. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, <laughs> Timur. Sorry. <laughs> I'll change my name. I, I just have the handle now. Yeah. Sometimes I can remember these things and other times I'm really, really bad with it. I apologize. Timur. Yes. All right. It's three after one. I go ahead and get started. Ooh, we've got a low attendance today. So let's see if we can make this quick then. Um, yeah, I still haven't finished my AI. Um, I still have the do the repo structure. Okay. Community time. Is there anything from the community that people would like to bring up? All right, not hearing any moving forward. Um, we are still having discussions uh, out in the TOC repo around what to do with serverless. Are we gonna stay working group under, um, 
under app delivery or not. Um, I did hear back from Liz and there seemed to be some concern about not creating a SIG just for serverless. And I told her it, basically in the end, we'll do whatever the TOC wants for the most part, but at the same time, we don't wanna get into this rat hole of, of having endless discussions about how to find serverless when in the end, it technically doesn't matter. What really matters is the work that we produce, you know, the projects and stuff like that. So we don't wanna just, you know, as I said, rat hole on how to define serverless right or to define it so narrowly that we're either gonna have to redefine it later or con continually explain to people why our definition is so narrow. And basically just don't want this turn to a process hell kind of a thing. And she, she kind of understands. Um, so we're still going back and forth on what to do here. I think um, most other people seem to be okay with us just being a working group under SIG app delivery, even though it's not the best fit, at least it gets us out of this process hell. So I'll let you guys know how it goes on. But as of right now, that's the current status, just going in circles. Uh, let's see, SDK. So this week we do have a call scheduled. However, um, I know Scott probably can't make it. Uh, Mark and Clements, they don't have any topics. Does anybody have any topics for the SDK call? Otherwise we'll cancel this week. Uh, I added one or two topics. There we go. I thought I'll you be, might be I'll the be quick. Maker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll make it I think, quick. I think, Scott is going to, I think Scott is going to join, I think. Okay, well, we'll see. Okay, we'll, we'll at least have the call and see if it's uh, quick it, not. Scott's not going to be able to make it. Oh. Well, let's see what the topics are when we get there. Hopefully this call itself will be quick anyway. So we'll see how it goes. Um, hey, hey, Doug. Uh, yeah. Did anyone have any comments or, or questions about this uh, SIG update topic? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask, yeah. Any questions? Does anybody on the call care whether we're just a working group under SIG app delivery or we're a full-fledged SIG? Well, this must have an, uh, an effect on new projects that we wanna create, right? We are a SIG, we can kind of do the SIG review ourselves for projects we are designing. And um, if we are just a working group, then SIG app delivery would be responsible for reviewing any new projects that come out of us, right? That is true. We will not have absolute control over our own destiny. Um, but to be but, honest, I, I don't think that's a huge issue to me. But Mark, did you want to say something? Oh, I, I, was, I was going to comment that I, I think I'd rather talk with SIG, SIG app delivery about any new projects than the, having to go to the talk and getting buy-in at the talk level if, if we were a SIG serverless. Yeah, I, I don't know. We don't create new projects on a daily basis anyway, right? So, okay, anyway, moving forward. Um, Tamar, is there anything you want to mention relative to updates for the workflow stuff? Yeah, thanks. Uh, we did have a version 0 0.1 release. And yesterday we did do a TOC um, presentation to SIG app delivery for sandbox approval. So we're in the review state right now for that. Okay. Any questions? Um, well, I mean, regarding that, I mean, I, I did get a feeling a little bit being new here. And so your guys' help would be much appreciated. Um, I don't know much about SIG app delivery, but to me, they seem more focused on actual applications running on Kubernetes rather than specification type of work. So my question is, if we do end up falling under SIG app, SIG app delivery, sorry, how they will... Um, you know, what, what about the specification work and how that will be embraced within that group? I'm not really fully certain. Anybody have any comments on that? Okay, from my point of view, I don't think it impacts anything, right? Once, once you're a project, regardless of what SIG you're under, I don't think the SIG really has much influence over what the project itself does. So to me, this entire SIG discussion is from some, from my perspective, more of a bureaucracy pain in the butt more than anything else, to be honest. So I personally wouldn't worry about it. Okay, sounds good. But, but, but that's me. I, <laughs> I, I, I cannot stand pro process for no purpose. And that's what this feels like to me. Anybody else have any different point of view?
Okay, not hearing any. All right, any questions about the workflow from the rest of the group? Okay, moving forward then. Um, I know Mike, you said you had to leave early, so hopefully we can get to this first PR quickly. Mm -hmm. that, that one might actually be ready to go or close to ready to go. And yours was just recently updated. So Francesco, do you want to talk to this one? I know I made some comments last night, but honestly, all my comments seem relatively minor. Um, but you want to bring everybody up to speed on what this one's all about? Uh, well, uh, the, the, the thing that I still didn't understand what, uh, what the group uh, feels about is if we want to move this HP multipart together with batching in, a, in another subspec, more than putting this inside HP for the whole binding subspec. I mean, in my opinion, it should live in an order together with batching, it should live in an order subspec. Any comments, thoughts? You guys are awfully quiet. I mean, to, to me, I, I looked at this yesterday and I think it looked good to me, just, just give you my voice there. Um, to me, the, the way that this is spec is specific to HTTP and that's what this spec is, or this part of the spec is meant for, right? So I don't see why it should be separate. Yeah, it seemed like a nice fit to me. Clement, did you want to say something? Your hand, here, you came off mute. Um, do we need this? <laughs> I mean, that's my, that's my, that's my, 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 it, my initial thought is, do we, ha do we need this? Because I, I, I just don't know how well, um, and I know multi-part exists, um, but I just don't know how well that's supported in common um, HTTP frameworks. Because it's a fairly, it's a fairly complicated thing to tease apart. And um, I, I know that there's, I mean, there's email is doing, is using multi-part, et cetera, but um, I, I don't, so basically the, the, the HTTP frameworks that I'm aware of um, are having a hard time splitting apart um, multi-part messages. Like there's no good support for getting multi-part and receiving a multi-part message request and then breaking that apart into into several entities. Anybody have thoughts or comments on that? Francesco, just to force the discussion a little, what was the biggest driver for you wanting to add this? My biggest driver is um, <coughs> To have some some way to send multiple events in the same envelope uh, without being forced to have um, uh, without being forced first to have a a, a finite uh, length of the envelope because doing doing this way we uh, you can send a potentially infinite uh, multipart envelope and. The second and most important uh, was to avoid a, a full parsing of a big JSON, like Batched now does. I mean, that's, but, that's the biggest. That's my biggest concern with Batched. But what what is drive? So so my then my my question is what is driving what what requirement is driving that? Because you could just as well say you're that you're using the the HTTP framing and that you're using pipelining. Um, uh, which works really well with HTTP2 and better, um, rather than um, using multi-part. Multi Basically, you start sending um, multiple HTTP, HTTP requests in a row, um, rather than um, forcing it all into a single HTTP request. The problem, the problem is that uh, having inside the same envelope uh, can give the, uh, the ability to the client so, so to, to the standard receivers to give them um, um, to give a meaning uh, to the various events. I mean, the user can decide if if it can give some kind of semantic of of, of the various events in the same envelope. Well, the example 
which is one of my drivers, is the fun uh, function invocation with multiple events. Wait, so the events are actually belonging together? And that's the point. The spec doesn't state that. You can, you can or you cannot give a semantic meaning. So what is your, is, but let, let's back out. What is their semantic meaning? So do, do you have a semantic that says, here's a set of related events? I, I was, uh, uh, I was going to try to um, develop a project uh, which actually sends uh, multiple events into this, uh, into a single request. Bec uh, because uh, a request was mapped to a single function invocation with multiple events. Yeah, but parameters. Are those, are those events dependent on each other or are they independent? Yes, because it's a function invocation with multiple parameters. A well, I, I mean, a function with just multiple parameters as input. I would, I would, argue, that's, I would argue that's not a batch. Or so, or or that is actually not a, that is not a transmission that we ought to solve at this level, because you're really what you're sending is you're sending one payload, and that payload contains multiple events. And and I think and I think the point here is that is exactly, exactly this one. I mean, I don't I don't want to have in the spec a, de, a definition of the semantic of why there are multiple events in the same envelope. I just want to say how to map. Yeah, but the point. My, yeah, my, but but my point is, since you're since you are doing a single transfer, effectively, bec so because you because you're grouping these those events, you're making a single message intentionally to transfer multiple entities inside of that message, right? The message concept is what we do with cloud events. So you what you're not doing here is you're not sending multiple cloud events. But you're sending one cloud event that contains multiple sub events effectively as 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 payload. So I'm not sure. Or I, I'm I'm actually convinced that um, that this is not something that should be solved at the transport level, but that's some, something that should be solved as at the as a composition um, inside of your event. Because your your scenario is not a is doesn't seem to be similar or an alternative to bashing. It is it is a way it's a way to express the body of the the body of the event differently, right? And the body of the event the the body of the event can be expressed as any arbitrary mime type, and for that you can already do multipart. If you wanted to, so there's nothing. So if you create if you create an event with with the content with with the data content type, my multi part, right? You can already do what you what you want to do, but we don't have to go and and, and manipulate the uh, um, the the transfer mode for this. If you create an event and the event has my multi part in it, as as the as the data content type, you can go and put inside of that event. You can put anything that you like, including a list of events. Does that make any sense, Francesco? Well, uh, how do a content type? I mean, Let's say I, I, I want to transport a cloud event uh, with a, with a multi-part content type, yes. a binary mode on a shipping. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, what happens then if I want to serialize this in JSON? I need to break apart. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't because it's you are using binary content mode. In binary content mode, you you label the content as um, my multipart, right? That is your content type, and then you take any arbitrary composition of my multipart and stuff that into the entity body. That so is what I that see. binary mode is for. Okay, so that so, so that means that in binary mode, then I will have 
to send uh, different parts and in every part I need to encode the event because the, the point is sending every parameter of the function is actually an event. Yes, but that's, that's a choice that you are making and, and that's fine. And I think that's a legitimate, legitimate use of cloud events. But yeah, if you want to do it like this, if you want to go and create a, an event, uh, if you have 10 parameters and every parameter is an event, then using my multipart is a legitimate way of doing this. But the way how you would do this is you would send one event, which carries my multipart, which has then in each part of the multipart uh, uh, transmission contains an event. But that's already a comp that's a composition you or we already have. The, what you're doing here is, you, it, if you only make this work for HTTP, right, then then this construct would not be would not work on any of the other transports that we have, right? The 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 model that we have is that all the constructs that we have work with all the defined transports, and if you really are uh, if if your design calls for having events, multiple events sent in one group together using my multipart. You can do this today by using my multipart as the data content type on a cloud event. And that will then go and work with all the, with all the, the bindings that we have from Kafka to MPP to MQTT to, to HTTP. And it doesn't special case, it's the special case for HTTP because I don't think we need to have a special case here. Well, but HTTP now has a, a way to send multiple events inside the same envelope with, with batching. I mean, yes, it, there, it, is no, already, there is already a special case now. The, well, yes. So there is a, now, actually it's not because the, the, um, the, the, um, the cloud events batching is, the batching mode is defined effectively also in, in conjunction with JSON. So it's a JSON, it's ultimately a function of the JSON encoding. So I, I kind of feel like we're not necessarily in agreement, but I also don't want to rat hole on this call too much. Would it make sense for you guys to talk offline, if not through voice, at least through the issue? I'll go, I'll go and, and uh, make a comment on this on the issue. Okay. Francesco, you, you okay with that? Because I do okay. think it's a, I think this is an interesting conversation. I'd like to see how it plays out a little bit more before we try to form a, a formal decision. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I would love if somebody else also participates in the discussion. Yeah, because I, I just remembered I did have one question that I forgot to ask an issue about or ask a question mm -hmm. about and I'll, I'll, I'll place that into the uh, issue or PR as well. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, Mike, you want to update us on your PR? That way you can leave in eight minutes. Uh, I, there were no new comments since in the past week. So I resolved open discussions and pushed a small change that fixes some minor wording. Okay. Um, I suspect, well, hmm. Did anybody get a chance to look at it since the bulk of the changes were made based upon the comments? The reason I'm asking is because I'm trying to figure out whether it's, I, I suspect it's too soon to formally vote to approve this or not, just because I'm not sure people had a chance to review it. So I wanted to ask the question though formally. Uh, go ahead, Rick, Ryan. Um, I, I did take a look at it. Um, you know, I think there, there were a few comments I made that were, um, some of them were more thinking out loud than uh, things I actually have conviction in, um, just to see what people thought. Um, there is one open discussion that I don't need, know needs to be solved specifically in this PR, which is whether um, there can be more than one producer of a given parameter and type. Um, but I, yeah, I mean the changes, the changes that were made look good to me. Okay, thank you. I mean, at this, at this stage in, the, in its life cycle, since we're not really anywhere close to nailing things down, I, I, I personally like the idea of leaning more toward, is it more right than wrong? And if so, let it, letting it in and we can tweak it through PRs. But at the same time, our usual process is if people want more time to review stuff before we approve, um, especially if changes were made relatively soon, 
then we give that time to people. So do people want more time to review or do they want to let it in and then work through issues and PRs to tweak it? So there's, there, there were no major changes right. in the past week. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, Doug, there, there's one other thing I wanted to point out yeah. uh, as well, which is um, there are, I made a comment about this, but um, it seems like we're introducing new concepts in this spec and, and the other specs um, that might be interesting to the, the primary cloud event spec. So I'm just, I'm curious as to how people think we, we navigate that, whether, where they're defined, um, whether it's useful to, if they're defined in these specs, like should we, if we think that there's like a new header that should be introduced, where does that get defined? Where does that get documented? Um, I don't have an opinions, but <laughs> figured I would bring it up as a question. Anybody want to comment on that? I think if the discovery specification were to, uh, were needing an attribute, um, then that's, I think that's an extension in the first place. Uh, there were no, no new attributes that would be need to be added to the cloud events spec proper. Okay. I would have been surprised if there were, but yeah, I think, I, but I think that's the, that's, that's how we we'll look at it is if there are, I mean, if there are concepts that are new, then we should certainly have them in the primer because I think the primer is still a living document that should be broader than the core cloud events spec. So I think definitions that we have here, um, um, you know, subscription manager and discovery and all those things, I think the primer should be expanded um, and then point to the various different documents that we have. So that's something that we should certainly do. But in terms of if, if, if an additional layered on feature like the like discovery or subscriptions or any of the other things we might still do, if that were to require additional attributes, I think those are by nature extensions. And I don't think they, they, they really require that the, um, that the core spec gets, gets modified unless that were something that everybody must implement. Klaus, your hands up. Yes, so I think it's extending the primer is a good idea because um, I'm honestly still a bit confused about the uh, row. I mean, how the relations are between event provider, producer, and so on. Um, I don't know if that um, holds this PR or if we just can work on this um, over the coming weeks and months. But um, yeah, explaining this new model or the, a bit more on the primer would be a good idea. Okay. So Klaus, I wasn't sure whether you were formally asking for a little more time to work on the possible confusion around the terms or are you okay letting it go in and then working on it through PRs? Perhaps we just need to, to let it go in and, and work on it then together. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments? And in particular, if you have any concern with letting it in, please speak up because I'm, if not, I'm gonna ask if it's okay to approve. Yeah, the, so the one, the one change in terminology is this producer versus provider. I, I, I expanded it out to event provider. You can see there on line 66. Yeah. Okay. All right, any uh, last chance, any questions, comments? Okay, any objection then to approving it and making further changes through PRs and issues? All right, thank you, Mike, for all that. I appreciate it. Sure. And whoops, wrong one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> drop off. See ya. Okay, so we we'll save the GraphQL for later, right? Yes, probably please. can talk about it for three minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> probably not enough to get into it deep. I have. I don't think there's been any comments on the issue. Okay. Yeah, I was on I was on vacation, so that's uh, that's why I probably haven't done that. Yeah, let, let's let's hold off on that discussion. Um, I think people slipped their mind or they, um, or we need to talk about it on the call, one of the two. And either way, you need to run. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see that next week. week. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. Clemens, first of all. I, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, you want to say something. Well, I just wanted to say that I think you pulled in the discovery spec by mistake. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, 
Um, and I don't, I need to go and see how I can go and fix this because I rebased and I rebased on master because the subscriptions API spec is already checked into master. Yeah. Well, we can work offline. Just want to make sure you, you know, and we can I, merge yeah, it. Yeah, I need to, I need to find, so I think I've, I, I think I fixed everything um, that was um, that feedback set, including I just added uh, earlier the uh, if, if, if present uh, clause, um, the extra if present clause. Where was uh, that? Let's uh, scroll down a little bit more. Yeah, ba, ba, ba. Was it included? Oh, here it is. If present, yeah, yes. You comment on, you also comment on this, like this. So that, that's the, that was the, the last contentious point. And so uh, the last thing I need to do is to figure out how to um, do the rebasing in a way that um, I am, uh, this, this PR no longer lists those two files and I uh, haven't been able to figure this out. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I, I, I'll have this, I'll have this, I probably have, won't have this today, but I'll, I'll let you know when I have that and they can go and, and merge it. Well, so let me ask a question. Um, Obviously, the, the, the PR rebasing is, is important before we actually try to merge it. However, in terms of the content in here, what do people think? Does it seem like it's right, basically? I, expect, I think all the normative texts are in these two blocks right here, right? Yes. And I think your changes over the last day or so were relatively minor, just more like syntactical yeah, kind of it things? Was, it was literally, literally just the if present. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, Francesco, I assume you're okay with this since I know you've been doing some reviews and going back and forth with Clemens. Yeah, it's fine for me. Okay. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Okay. Is there any objection then to approving this conditionally upon fixing the rebase issue? Okay, not hearing objections. We will approve that. Uh, once this issue is fixed. All right, excellent, thank you. Technically, that's the end of the agenda, except for something completely different that Clemens wants to talk about. And just to make sure, are there any other cloud event or two new spec issues people wanna bring up before we move on to Clemens' last topic? Okay, not hearing any. Clemens, the floor is yours. Yeah, I'm going to make this relative. I'm going to make this brief. Uh, amongst um, the the topics that we had on our list of things that we want to go and start tackling uh, in this group, um, and then we picked uh, subscriptions and discovery first, was uh, schema registry. That's now becoming quite a hot topic. Um, I know that Tim um, from AWS and also as we were having this discussion said he'd be interested to throw their schema registry interface into the ring. Um, and so we're seeing, effectively we're seeing an increasing uh, need for having a standardized schema registry um, as um, uh, you know, we have obviously pointers to schemas and cloud events and we need to be able to go and store them somewhere. Um, there is uh, around Kafka, there's a popular schema registry, which is unfortunately under, under a, a proprietary license um, that customers are using. And um, there needs to be something that is unified and open that everybody can use. Um, and so the serverless working group here, and I think in particular the cloud events um, uh, effort would be a great place to um, and define a common schema reg registry. And I would be um, delighted if we found a sub-working group um, that could sit together and uh, compare notes on existing schema registry drafts. We have one. Um, and then uh, can probably come out with a spec that defines a simple model for a common approach for a schema registry. And the way I think about this really is it's nothing more than a CRUD service that allows you to store and then retrieve serialization schemas from a central place so that you can go and, and serialize a cloud events payload in Avro um, uh, in, you know, at the publisher side. And then as you receive the event, you can go and take a look at the schema, the schema URL 
and you can go and um, and pull this out. Serialization and validation schemas is the question. Yes, both. Um, I think think of that as a. It's ultimately a, a text file store that then might be a little smarter about um, the. Um, um, might then be a little smarter about you know upgradability and compatibility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Might have some logic to it, but ultimately, I think the the minimal thing is a. Um, a, a re simple REST API that allows you to store an Avro schema and then reference an Avro schema and have a mechanism for how you can go and create a URL, which create which probably has an access token in it, etc. So nothing nothing complicated, but something that we can all agree on, um, that we can all implement, and uh, um, that then you know gives a common way to to handle those those serialization and validation schemas. Okay, I think there are a couple of hands up. I think mine was up first. So qu quick clarifying questions. It sounded like you were talking about at least defining some sort of specification, but it wasn't clear to me whether you're also looking for this organization or the CNCF to also host a central schema registry. No, I think of that as a, as a software component that we all, that where we define the interface. Okay. And then um, the schema registry is something that is so specific to particular applications. Uh, don't think this is uh, something where you need to have a grand site or a repository. If someone wants to build one, that's great. Um, and if that adheres to the same uh, to the same uh, interface, even better. Um, but I think of this mostly as an interop effort first, and not as a you know grand registry for all the schemas in the world in the sky. We had that once with UDDI, and that didn't work well. Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you, uh, Ryan. Your hands up next. I think this is a, I think this is a natural topic for us to, to cover. Um, even if it doesn't turn into anything, I think it's um, something that everyone that I've talked to that is doing something similar has to do anyway. So uh, we might as well, might as well cover it. Um, I guess one question that I have is like, how specific or generic are you thinking of being? You mentioned Avro, but like, are we, are you thinking that this should be um, generic and supportive of any kind of schema technology? So they all vary in slightly different and in interesting ways. Um, just curious if you have any thoughts on that. Um, so I think the schema registry needs to have a notion of the type of schema, um, but that's really, but then otherwise it's mostly just files. Um, and so you can, so you would, you would store a schema, you would say this is Bavro schema, and then you would store the Avro schema with it. Um, and you should probably be able to go and search for um, uh, schemas that are Avro schemas. So I have some level of discoverability. Um, but um, otherwise, it's, um, you know, schemas in general are, are typically text files um, that adhere to some common, um, uh, you know, meta schema, I should say. And uh, so there might be a facility that makes sure that if you're submitting an Avro schema, that the schema is actually a valid Avro schema. And there might be, if you have JSON schema, then it might go and check that this JSON schema. And there should be a sensibility that the implementation and implementation of that same interface can um, also accommodate any other schemas that you might want. Um, so it's really about you know creating a common interface that that all serialization libraries and validation libraries can can rely on because ultimately what ultimately for cloud events the, the way how this is all shaping up um, is we have a multitude of different products which are going to support cloud events through a multitude of different transports and we will have a way to push into a network of you know connected uh, uh, transports where you push an event in on one side and then you get the event in out, out on the other side. You know, one is, is doing the publishing in C sharp, the other one is getting the event out in, in Go. And there should be a common way for how libraries um, can obtain and decode the schema. Right? It needs to be, and it might be that the, the way how you get at the schema is simply an HTTP get, and that's probably okay. But since there is no common, there is no definition for how that's working, um, I think we need to go and create one. So I'm not looking for anything that's enormously complicated, but I'm looking for a convention that is actually as simple as it can be, 
um, but some, but one that all the implementations that we make and all you know serializer serializer can can then come and uh, can then can then rely on. So since no one hand is up, I'll ask another question. I guess that's the one thing I'm a little confused about. Um, if in the end there's a schema URL or URI somewhere in, 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 the, in the cloud event that you got, and you just do an HTTP get on that URL or whatever transport is specified in the URL for, you know, for the protocol, why do we need to actually have a spec for the user's side of it? Or do we even need a spec for that? Um. I think you need to have a spec that defines that, that that you need to have a spec that defines how what the rules are for um, storing that schema, um, how you can publish, you know, new schema. Um, right. No, I understand you may need one from the producers from the from the schema owner's point of view. Yes. That I understand. Um, but from the user's side of it, or the person pulling the schema down just to do validation, do we actually need a spec for that? Or is it as simple as just, you have a URL, do an HTTP get on it? Um, you would still, I, th I think there's still a, um, a set of rules um, where you would probably want to say, this is an Avro schema. And interestingly enough, Avro for its schema <coughs> has not defined the MIME type. So, <laughs> So this is there are some there are some some little things that you still have to get commonality around um, that are not as easy as you think, um, and uh, wh which are solved in these you know, island solutions. Um, and but there is no standard around what the what a schema registry for messaging ought to look like or for eventing ought to look like. And I think it would be enormously helpful if we had one. Okay, thank you. Ryan, is your hand old or new? Uh, no, I was just gonna, I was gonna say, um, that's, that's, your echo. Um, that's one of the things I felt was somewhat hand wavy about the, the proper cloud event spec in, in that, that there's a URL, but there's no way to, there's, or at least it's not specified how you interpret what gets returned. Um, and I, I think Clemens, it's one of the things that you're, you're getting at here. Mm -hmm. um, one of my questions, and I don't have a strong opinion about this, um, is uh, is this its own thing or is this part of discovery? Uh, I, I, no, I think this is distinct. And the reason why I think it's distinct is because that registry, so I'm not I'm not sure even whether that's an, whether that's a cloud events that we should constrain this cloud events um, per se, but I think that's something that might be useful for um, serverless. I think it belongs in our group, um, but it might be something that can can stand in parallel to cloud events, but it's useful for cloud events. So let's put it this way. Um, yeah, because I, I think my, my my only concern there is if it's too generic. Um, and if it's only specifying things like those little nuances, like the content type, um, what, what it, what's actually driving it, the, what it's responsible for and its shape. So, so I can, so I can, so one thing I, so one thing I can tell you, and that is, that is the car, so here's the concrete concern. Um, the schema registry that we see customers coming to us with. So there are, there are several schema registries that are out there, right? And all of them are doing similar things, but they're all proprietary. Um, and proprietary meaning they are not under a, an open source license um, of the sort that you can go and use them as you please. For instance, one of the, one of the schema, schema registries that um, is popular is the one that has been made by Confluent. And Confluent decided to change the license on that thing in December 2018, and uh, has made a clause into that into the license where it pr precludes any IaaS, SaaS, or PaaS provider um, to um, to use that schema registry. Which means now customers come and they realize that they are locked into that particular schema registry. There is no standard interface, no common interface that anybody could go and implement 
that that serialization libraries or that um, uh, you know validation libraries could go and adhere to um, from a client side to you know speak to a common provider, and and so and that sort of a lock-in for me is unacceptable. Um, and there are no there is no library out there in any of the in any of the uh, no simple enough let's put it this way library out there in any of the, the, the open source foundations except Apache Atlas, which is a very large metadata monstrous project that that solves the problem of um, providing such a registry. So I'm interested in both having implementation and we're doing this here in this project, we're having implementations of things right? also. I'm both interested in having the implementation of a of a registry, but more more interested even in having just a common interface that everybody can go implement from the client side as well as from the server side that is not encumbered by any constraints um, of of proprietary licensing. So, Clement, I I heard earlier on that that uh, you talked about having a small number of people go off and do some initial look at this and then bring it back to the team. Yeah. What would, what would be needed for success there? Um, I think that subgroup should come out with an implementable spec. You talked, you talked about uh, AWS participating. Are, are there, do we, do we need uh, representatives from certain companies, certain public clouds, et cetera? Yeah, I would, I would like, I would like Tim to know about this and and have a have a voice in it and participate. And ideally, um, the um, we're having um, uh, well, the usual suspects. Um, uh, the biggest cloud vendors should are certainly be part of the effort. So I would certainly want you guys, and I would certainly want Tim and Doug uh, to be part of this. Oh, it seems, to, oh, uh, Eric, were you going to say something? You came off mute. No. Okay. It seems to me that <clears throat> from a, just a process perspective, one thing that might be useful is if for you to write up an issue, Clemens, just describing what you want to do so that people who could not make the phone call could yeah. read it, comment on it, stuff like that. And if there is enough interest to make it another sub-project, then, um, and people agree that it falls within our domain, and I don't see a problem with us starting that and, and doing it as another piece of work if people want to do. My only concern is that I would hope that it would not pull people's time away to, to prevent us from making progress on the other specs. That's one of my concerns. No, no, of course. Yes. It's, it's just something that is becoming more pressing um, as we see that it's, it's, it, that's, a, that's a matter that's really starting to be painful for um, customers more than the subscription and discovery stuff is. Yep. Um, specifically, as we have, um, 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 you know, as we're adding cloud events and um, customers are you know, using more and more binary um, encodings, etc. Um, so that's something that becomes that becomes a fairly pressing thing. Right. And and we're we we will we will in the not too distant future have some kind of schema registry functionality. And uh, before um, that gets to, we're, we're happy to make changes early. It's just that as, if we're shipping for a very long time, then obviously more and more applications get bolted to whatever proprietary solution we came up with. And so I would like to avoid having, having proprietary, proprietary approach for too long, but I would rather want to go and say, you know, this is effectively the preview. And, uh, and and rather get to a harmonized solution early and probably even before we go GA. Yep. Okay. Any questions, comments before we move on? So I'll write this up. Yep, thank you, Clemens. Interesting topic, thank you. All right, any other topics for the call today? Otherwise we'll wrap it up. Yes. Um... There's one that is, uh, we had our review with the SIG app delivery yesterday 
from the serverless workflow subgroup and we uh, were asked and we already had those other projects on our related projects list to reach out to Argo and Tecton. Now I did that and um, I think Alex Collins from Argo, he seemed to be really interested in an exchange of how they define their workflows. And uh, from Tecton, I don't have a response yet, but the question now is, if these readouts about how they define their um, serverless orchestrating workflows uh, happens um, with us, would, would you guys be interested to have it in the work group serverless or should we do it entirely within the workflows? Any comment on that? Not hearing any. I, uh, I, I think workflow makes the most sense to me just because I wouldn't want to splinter yep. things too much, but that's just my personal opinion, not knowing much about it, to be honest. <laughs> Anybody else want to comment at all? This may be a decision more for the workflow subgroup to actually decide for itself, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure. I just thought this is a broader audience. And if you guys are interested, we could have it in the weekly serverless. I know this is a fixed date on the calendar, whereas ours is Monday every four weeks. So uh, might not be a good time for everybody to join. I just wanted to ask and I, I'm good with also these are weekly and we have our next community meeting in uh, May so right yeah okay yeah I, I think since no one's speaking up it sounds like you may just keep it within the workflow subgroup for right now yeah thanks okay cool all right anything else all right, in that case, final roll call before we jump over to the SDK call. Uh, David Baldwin, you there? Uh, yes. Hello. Doug, I got you. Ahmed, are you there? Yes. Okay, excellent. And Falco, you there? I'm sorry, Nicholas. Wait, did Nicholas drop? Oh, we lost Nicholas. Okay, Falco, I, I see you coming off mute. So you're there, right? Yes, I'm here. And Mr. Scott? I'm done, Doug. All right, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Hey, Dustin Ingram here. Oh, Dustin, yes, thank you. I don't know why I even saw your name, but I skipped over it. All right, cool. All right, in that case, I believe we're done. Thank you, everybody. And if you want to join the SDK call, stick on the line. Otherwise, have a good day, everybody. Bye. Okay. Let's thank see. you, bye. Yep. All right, let's just give it 30 more seconds then we'll get started. So Scott, while we're waiting, how did the, um, uh, the K-Native community call go? It was, it was overall good. A um, couple presentations and updates and whatnot, and then an interesting demo on some blockchain stuff, but there was a little bit of networking problems and I think the, the rule of thumb should be if you're going to do demos on Knative and or Kubernetes, you don't run it from your laptop while you're presenting from your laptop. <laughs> yeah. So use a cloud. <laughs> Makes everything better. Yeah. All right. But it was interesting. All right. Cool. I assume they recorded it, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna try to do like a more streamlined demo to, to lace into the presentation they send to YouTube. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, uh, Francesco, I think you had the only topics. Oh, uh, that's not the one now, but go ahead, Francesco, you can go first with yours. Yeah, so first, um, uh, I'm progressing on SDK Rust. So as you can see from this cool board of GitHub, actually, mm. uh, there are a couple of things which are in progress. And 
Uh, I, what, what I'm still missing, it's the encoders for HTTP, uh, which is a work in progress, but it's going really well. And I hope in two weeks to have a release. Uh, just, a I have a couple of questions for you, Doug, first. Uh, do we have any way to promote the SDK, the new SDK, like uh, blog post or, uh, I know that on the website there is like on cloudevents.io, I see uh, on the top nav bar uh, SDKs and uh, like how can I add uh, to, to, to the nav bar the, the SDK, yeah. Questions like this, I mean, there is anything I should do for, for this release or like to promote uh, the SDK? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I, obviously, if you want to do another blog post type thing like this, I think just submit a pull request to the, to the website repo. Um, other types of promotions, I'm not sure if we have anything else other than this. I mean, obviously we can, from the Twitter, from the Cloud Events Twitter account, we can blog if you, if you do, or sorry, tweet about it, if you do a blog with a pointer to it. Well, yeah, I can do a blog post on my personal blog, but of course it, it doesn't have the same visibility of blogging here. You know, I, I think I think you can do a pull request and to get it added to here. I don't think that's a problem. At least I don't think anybody would have a would have a concern with that because obviously SDKs are part of our organization, so it makes perfect sense to do it here. If you, if you just submit a pull request to the repo, I think that should all be all that's needed. Okay. Anybody have any objections to that, or think it's just, so this, just something different? I, I, I guess a a meta comment uh, or meta issue that we could talk about is. Should we have a static blog site as part of the cloud events website to allow for blogs to be posted directly on here? Yeah, because having having the having the the, the announcement here, is, I think it's not correct. I mean, we should have like a blog, uh, like some kind of blog. Yeah, I think he's right. So just want to make sure, would it be a, a would it still would it still be under cloudevents.io, right? Just a separate blog section, or is there? Are you guys thinking of, about something different? No, I'm thinking about under cloudevents.io, but allow but allowing for uh, static content as a, as blogs. Okay. Um, I'll reach out to I can't remember the gentleman's name who did the last revamp of our website. I can't imagine that'd be very difficult to do. Um, I'll reach out to him and see if he can pull that together, unless someone else understands the framework that the website uses. I just don't know it myself. I think I do. Okay. You want to take a stab at putting together a rough template, Scott? For adding extra blog posts? Yeah, yeah up, up with a permanent sort of spot on the website for blog posts, as opposed to announcements, which is what I think this one, I'm sorry, which I think is what this is more about. This is just oh, announcements oh, as opposed to permanent blogs. I think this is Hugo, and if that's the case, that's exactly what my blog is. Okay, I don't, well, hold on, I'm not sure it is Hugo. Um, hold on, GitHub, Cloud Events. Doug, you see my blog post? I did, but I didn't get a chance to read it. I clicked on it and then I got distracted, I apologize. So the answer is no. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think, Scott, that your blog post could be cool to repost. On, on the official cloud events uh, look. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for more of like a, okay. right, like the, the cloud events.io can't, there's no snark there and there shouldn't be, and I can, so. So I assume because we have this, this comment right here, I think you're right, he probably is using Hugo. Yeah, I think it's Hugo. So yeah, it's, it's not hard to um, inject. Actually, it's using the blog plug-in. So yeah, this is really easy to do. Okay. I mean, I guess if, if you can do a PR, then Francesco can you know, do another PR after that to add the very first blog entry. Hey, hey Doug, look at the comment around uh, assets SAS. Make blog link display conditional. Yeah. Wonder so what I'm the... sure we can, this, this looks easy. Okay. Cool. Okay. There you go, Francesco. Is but I, I, I think the, the, the other side of this is uh, understanding how we get content out onto the, the Twitter account as well. Because I think right now it's just Doug, Doug and myself that uh, can tweet out about things and 
we need a more formal process to make sure that we can uh, get things out on, on a timely basis with the right content. Would it make sense to allow people to suggest tweets by just doing something like opening up an issue someplace that we monitor? Or do you want to make it more like they send you and I an, you know, a ping? I don't know that I have an answer. I, th I think there's whole professionals that do this job. Well, I know Mark, neither, I don't think Mark or I want to make this a full-time job either, so. Yeah. I think what the, the pros do is they set up uh, like a backlog of content that, that goes out on a schedule. And you just add to the backlog and it goes out. So there's like constant engagement and it, it appears that your brand is actually thriving, but it's every, you know, some prime number of hours. Sounds like a bot. I don't know. I guess we could think about this. I'm just, I just don't have an answer either. I, the only reason I, that I focus on issues is because that tends to be something that will nag me. Right. Or an email from somebody will, will nag me because it sits in my to in my to do list. Um, I, and, I, and I don't want people to feel like, oh, the only way to get something out there is to know about some secret process and some secret person to ping. Whereas if it's an issue, then we could say open it up here and the owners of this repo are responsible for watching it. Maybe we can get a uh, GitHub action so that they will auto post it. <laughs> I'm sensing abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, let's think about that. Let, let's wait until we get uh, Francesco's blog up there, and then we can worry about how to formalize the process for a tweet. How's that? Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Francesco, is there anything else related to this first issue you had that you want to talk about? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, right. I, need, I need to bail. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye, Mark. Oh, the only thing is that if there's anybody that wants to contribute to SDK Rust, we need it because. Uh, do you remember that like uh, uh, we initially talked about this SDK with other two guys, but they didn't really contribute it. So <laughs> I'm doing this basically all alone. <laughs> so yeah, that I don't know. It's, it's a recurring theme I'm, I'm hearing. Yeah, I, hope, I I really I really hope that uh, when we are advertise it, uh, somebody will pops up. Yeah. That's one of the downsides to being open source, right? You got to wait for people to volunteer. Of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, what's your next one? It's, um, Java SDK. Yeah. So um, I'm continuing to do a progress on reworking the SDK Java, but to be frank, I'm, I'm mostly rewriting the SDK in one PR, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, will not, I mean, no, I mean, the, the problem is that I open it, um, how do I say, the Pandora vase? That's, that's the way to say in English. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I changed it a couple of bits and I ended up changing everything. So I would love to, to be more incremental on this change. I know that Fabio uh, also gave me some tips, but I mean, nothing more than this. Uh, I'm not sure, do, do, do you have any ideas on how can I progress on this? I also know that uh, there is some interest for doing these changes, uh, but from my internal side, but I know that also other companies are interested in changing the SDK Java as is now. Anybody have any comments? Yeah. I'll, I'll second that. Wait, singing which thing? Uh, that it needs a little bit of a rework, I think. I think this is heading in the right direction. I haven't actually reviewed the PR myself, though. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Francisco, to me, if Fabio is okay with the direction you're headed, I mean, it sounds like he is. I'm not following it personally, but based upon this comment right here, it sounds like he's okay with all the work that you're doing. It may feel awkward to have a PR with, you know, almost 80 files, but if it's the right direction and he's okay with it, you know. Okay, just the thing is that this, this needs to trigger another major release of the SDK. Because, uh, I mean, we, we can do a minor release after these changes because I've changed the word. <laughs> yeah. So, 
we, we need a major release after this. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is a this is a decision for the Java SDK authors to decide, and that implies basically you and Fabio for the most part, right? I'm still not, I'm still not an author since <laughs> we don't have any PR merged. Well, no, aren't you? I, I thought. See, what's interesting is I think you actually can merge the PR. Check it, because I believe all SDK maintainers are maintainers for all SDKs. Yes, I can merge the PR, but. I won't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, th at that point, I think basically you need to poke on, on Fabio to do the actual merge then and do or do a review and merge. Well, I would love to have uh, inputs all from other people other than Fabio. I mean, also from Fabio, but from other people too will be interesting because it's a big, big change. So, okay. Well, Scott, do you think you might have time to take a look at it? I did. Okay. I, I think um, I think it's just like with the Go SDK. We need to take what's there, think about the lessons learned, and and make it anew. Like, click on my little demo app. And then scroll down, and then punch yourself right in the face. <laughs> Because this is not what you should be having to do to uh, send and receive cloud events. Those, those Spring, uh, I mean, those annotations of Spring are JAX RS annotations, right? Uh, I think that they're, they use JAX in the, in the internals or something, but they're actually Spring class. Okay, so I mean, if I create a decoder and an encoder for JAX RS, to work on top of Spring, right? Yeah, that would that would really help. Like, I think that's the way people really want to use this stuff. And so, if you scroll up to the other example, um, one scroll up, please. Sorry, got distracted. No. So this is this is getting. So basically, this demo is um, if you post to to root, you uh, store an, a cloud event, and then if you get at root, you get that same event back out. And so you can kind of see the the lines 31 to 45 is how you set up with the builders, which is fine, but the the builder it, it's not like you can set up the like the base event and then build more off of that, like a builder might or like a factory might. So I, I think the builder ultimately is fairly awkward because it's it's very static and not really adjustable. And then the wirer thing is really difficult to use with a spring. This is the spring framework because it has to be in spring responses to actually send the entity out. Uh, so, another, another thing that uh, I want to echo about the wire is that it assumes that adders are a map of string object. And that's not always the case. Uh, that's, like, yeah, that's not the case in Spring. Is it? Yeah, but not, not even in Netty. I mean, in Netty, uh, address are multi-maps. So, uh, yeah. hash map of string of list of strings. That's right. It's, it should be an array. It's a, it's a map of arrays of strings. Or a map of a map of a map or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I, I went through this exercise and it was enlightening. Uh, I don't really think I can give the the thumbs up on trying to get people to use the Java SDK with Spring because it's too hard. Yeah, same here. Same here. Uh, the I mean, fact that I have to get the request body as a string, if you scroll down a few lines, uh, and then slam that into this unmarshaler, but I have to know that I'm going to unmarshal binary, doesn't really work. And that's kind of like counter to everything we've been trying to do with the Go SDK. Or you take you take an active request and you turn it into an event. You but for for Java in this implementation, you have to know ahead of time that like I'm going to try to do binary unmarshalling. Hmm. And you also have to know the yeah, the spec version. Right, yeah, which are things that are supposed to be inside the request in the body. 
So I would rather see an, a, a cloud events on Marshaller that you give the, the HTTP headers and body and you get back a cloud event that's parsed based on what's there, not what you know ahead of time. Makes sense. So I think, yeah, there's, there's a lot of usability things that aren't really how I would use Java. Well, Francesco, it's, I mean, in, in the end, like I said, I think it's going to be between you and Fabio, and he sounds okay with it. And I know it may make you uncomfortable that you're not getting enough reviews, but... Why don't you make a branch? Uh, well, um, how do you feel? I think you should make a V2 branch and work out of that. I think, I think it should be the contrary. The actual master should go in a V1 branch, and then we put on master V2. That that would that works too. Hmm. Master is yeah. the the head of line in development thing. There you go. Yeah, I can, I can do that. And I I I, th I think what I'm going to do now to merge this one is first to make the core uh, module working, and I disable from the compilation the other modules because none of the other modules will work, and then I will slowly incrementally enable the other modules. And we can also start putting new stuff like uh, uh, like the one you said, Scott, about annotations, which I frankly didn't understand what it's about. <laughs> and the JuxRS, uh, Marshall and Marshall. Yeah, and the Spring team is currently working on like official Spring bindings for Cloud Events. But they weren't, like I pointed them at the Java SDK to help kind of decode stuff, but they looked at it and it's, it's not in a, a way that they can actually leverage to use in, in a common way. Because uh, it's just too much work. Um, I think that, I think Doug, you should tell me about is as soon as I have this PR merged, uh, I would love to publish a snapshot. How do I do that? Um. We should start using GitHub Actions. We can store secrets inside of GitHub, and then we can write. It's a very like a, they're like primitive containers that you can run uh, inside of GitHub, uh, based on pull requests or tags or branches or whatever. Uh, and so we can like, we actually have a demo now in uh, in another repo where you can make a tag, and then that tag produces a a build, does all the testing. Uh, and then produces a release for you based on the tag. And then it, it pushes those image up to a registry with secrets that are baked into the, the repo, which is the task I was supposed to look at. And so I did, and it works. There you go. One thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the, the shorter answer is, uh, fa is it fa Fabiano? Fabio. Fabio has the keys to the, the to the Maven repo. Oh well, oh well. Now that I look at it, it looks like the Travis when I merge on my on um, Travis on master, it actually uh, deploys a snapshot in Maven Central. So it looks like it does now. So maybe I just need to change the version. But yeah, the long answer is having some kind of automation because I can publish only snapshots this way. I can't publish releases. Is it is it cool that the keys are baked in there? I was, yeah, I was gonna move away from it real quickly. <laughs> no, that's a public file. Uh, yes, anyone? it is. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at there, so I thought I, and we are being recorded, so I was gonna get out of there real quick. It's, it's they, uh, they should be encrypted. Oh really? It says public keys. I don't. I don't know. But yeah, like that's exactly the use case for GitHub Actions. And if you click on, like, I'll I'll show you where they would end up. If you go to settings, uh, settings, and then you click on uh, secrets. So GitHub has this whole thing where you can add new secrets and stuff, and they become encrypted in the actions, and you only uh, maintainers of the this project can see the secrets. Hmm. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. 
I was going to, I'm, I'm a little busy right now, but I think in the next uh, couple of weeks, I'm going to try to move the Go SDK uh, out of Circle CLI and onto GitHub Actions. We've been uh, learning how to use GitHub Actions a little bit. It sounds like you, uh, you like them. It's, it's pretty nifty. The fact that like, it, they basically did a um, if this, then that based on uh, GitHub events and then it's centered around a, a Tekton-like flow. Cool. Yeah. If, okay. you manage, if you manage to port also the containers to run Kafka and uh, Cupid router while running the test, it's really cool. We, yeah, we, um, we actually have a, a demo of testing Knative in Mink in GitHub Actions. <laughs> wow. Uh, sorry, in kind. We, we run kind on the GitHub action and run end-to-end -end tests. That's really cool. Exception of containers. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's all, it's all sorts of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I think all of that runs in Azure. So it's, it's Azure containers running kind Docker container, Kubernetes in a container, all in a container. It's, it's the fact that it works is insane. It, it hurts my head to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. All right. Uh, anything else, Francesco, from your issue? I said okay. everything. Okay. Uh, Dustin, you're up. Yeah. So, along those lines, based on what we were talking about um, two weeks ago, made a PR to switch the Python SDK from Circle CI to GitHub Actions. And uh, since I'm not a collaborator, I didn't actually run it in the PR, but you can see it on my branch that it runs and completes. I'll set a support for Python 3.8. And uh, I don't know about for the other SDKs, but for the Python one, Circle CI is just broken. Like it, I'm not really sure what it's missing, but it, it doesn't work right now. So all PRs fail. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and did this. So <clears throat> who's the maintainer of this one? I apologize, I should probably know this, but I don't, is it? Dennis, he, he hasn't done anything in a long time, right? Doesn't seem to me like uh, much is happening here right now. So let me ask a bold question. Should I just approve your PR and make you a maintainer? Do it. <laughs> yeah, I would, <laughs> I would uh, I'd appreciate that. Let's just do it then. Let me, are you okay with like, squashing it first? Well, I just, My, I would just make, make a- That's true, let me just do it the easy way. And then Dennis will do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it'd be good to see it run on this PR as well, uh, if yeah, I was a okay. collaborator. I'll do it after the meeting. It, it, it's, wow, you managed to get DI as your name and GitHub. That's really cool, just nice and short. <laughs> okay. Dustin, since, since you are uh, the new maintainer of uh, <laughs> 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 can you also prove the PR to have 1.0 support? Yeah, yeah, so that's <laughs> the other thing. Important. I mean, yep, I agree. And uh, actually the next topic I want to talk about here is I sort of have like an overarching issue in that repo about sort of the same thing we're talking about with the Java SDK, which is that I think it needs basically a complete rework. Um, so some feedback here would be awesome. I wasn't planning on making a PR that just completely redoes it, but I could do that as well. That's how we want to move forward with it. But uh, basically wanted to get some thoughts here about whether it's worth doing. It seems like if we're doing similar things for Java, uh, making it more in line with what the Rust SDK is going to look like would be uh, ideal, I think. Well, uh, what I did is that, I mean, I created Java like it, Java style APIs, but I kept the same concept of messages, which is the one that we applied in SDK Go to marshal and unmarshal back and forth, HTTP, Kafka, uh, whatsoever. And then I, I shaped the, the event um, the event data structure um, to, to don't be um, mapped to, to JSON because the problem uh, that the SDK Java had, and I think it's more or less the same for uh, SDK Python, if I remember correctly, is that um, it's designed to, uh, the, the data structure is designed to be easy to use uh, with Marshall and a, and a Marshall to back and forth JSON, right? 
I, I think anything we can do to make this more easy, like I often hear the Python SDK is a, a very difficult to use. And so people really want to, to use Python and Go, or sorry, Python and Cloud Events, but uh, the SDK just doesn't work. And so people will get stuck. Like, yeah, that's basically why I made this issue. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't work because it supports uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. I mean, the, I think that's the biggest issue now with the SDK Python. It needs at least to support the latest versions and remove what, at 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Yeah, Ooh. so I mean, I, I, as yeah. a new maintainer, I think uh, we definitely want to add support now for the earlier versions of the spec if the PRs exist. But uh, yeah, I think it, when we move forwards to supporting 1.0, it might be time to, to rework it a little bit as well. Thank you, new maintainer. <laughs> big, big plus one from me. Same. All right, so I can work on a better, more detailed proposal on how that might look before I start actually writing code as well. And uh, yeah, I'll loop in anyone that's interested. Yeah, th these kinds of documentations help a lot. Like when I'm, when I'm working on the Golang SDK, I need to write what the integration is going to look like from an integrator so that they can, so that we can see like, how's this UX going to be? Yeah, but you should have an invite in your inbox, uh, and Dustin. So you should be a maintainer now once you approve the invite. Okay, thank you. Yep, have at it. Enjoy the power. All right, Lance. Well, um, I wasn't actually planning on talking about anything during the meeting today, but some of the conversation has brought up some questions that I have about the JavaScript SDK. Um, I've got a handful of PRs that are outstanding there and some of them are big and I want to I've been wanting to do even bigger ones um, and I guess uh, um, I'm wondering what the you know well a couple of things one um, circle CI was mentioned as the um, CI tool for Python um, JavaScript is using Travis uh, and then you know I guess there's the um, the github actions is the direction that some folks are wanting to move. Is there, number one, is there a standard um, that, you know, everything should be using? And uh, number two, how can I make, you know, get just a little more traction on some of these pull requests and have a little more confidence that the things that I'm submitting that are potentially big uh, might get some visibility? Do you want to be a maintainer? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I, that, I could totally do that. I, I maintain plenty of repositories, but, um, you know, I've never even really had a conversation with Fabio. I'm kind of new to the organization and everything. So, you know, I understand if that's not necessarily legit right out of the box. Um, but I would like to have a little bit more, you know, just traction on some of the stuff that, that we're submitting there. It seems to me that <clears throat> for some of these things, if you can get Fabio to at least comment on them, I think that's that's a step in the right direction. And if he doesn't, if it doesn't seem like he's busy enough to to review them properly and to approve them, but he doesn't seem necessarily to be against the direction you want to go, I'm inclined to do the same thing with you that we just did with Dustin and say, you know, we don't want to block things, and if you're going to do the work, go for it. I'll make I'll make you a container. Okay, well, I mean, I guess I can start by just pinging Fabio on, on these outstanding PRs. Yeah, I uh, start there because, like I said in the past, he sometimes gets pulled off on other stuff, but usually if you ping him, he will usually respond. But if not, you know, I, I mean, just to give a little bit of history, most of the maintainers of these SDKs were made maintainers because they were there when the project got started and they said, hey, I want to work on this. So it's not like they had to meet some minimum bar other than to raise their hand. So it would be really... It's unfortunate that we don't have a higher bar than that right now, but if you're going to raise your hand and to work on it and it's going to move the thing forward in the right direction, then that's the best the bar we have. Yeah, okay. I, and I, I think we have a couple of other folks at Red Hat who would be interested in contributing to it as well. So, yeah. yeah. Okay.
All right, anything else for the call today? I, I got to bounce, thank you. All right, thank you everybody. We'll talk bye next bye. time. Okay, bye. Same, take care. Bye-bye.